Hi, I'm Carmen, the community coach, and today I'm going to talk about Gary V's latest book, 12 and a Half. Gary V is a very successful entrepreneur and founder of V Friends NFT collection. He recently released his sixth book called 12 and a Half. As a community manager, this book truly resonated with me. In this book, Gary V, who has an estimated net worth of $200 million, reveals the 12 essential emotional skills that he believes are the reasons for his success in life and business, and believes leaders in the past have dismissed these soft skills as they aren't quantifiable. They can't be measured on a spreadsheet. Does this sound familiar? I'm sure it does to anyone in the community management space because it's also difficult to quantify many of the tasks that community managers do, but they're so incredibly important to ensure long-term success of the community. In this book, Gary explores the 12 soft skills that he believes are vital for business success. And whilst reading it, I realized that these skills also apply to community management. So I'm going to go through these skills one by one with a community manager lens on and discuss how they play a role in the life of a community manager. I'll also be giving away one of these books, so make sure to watch till the end of the video to find out how to win a copy of the book for yourself. Yay! The book is super practical with real life scenarios and exercises to improve those skills. Not only that, but I think it's really cool how Gary Vee actually ended up selling the books. He actually got his community involved to distribute the book. <laughs> and it's just a crazy story. And I'll talk about that a little later in the video. But first, I'm going to talk about the book, go through the key skills that he mentioned, and specifically talk about how it relates to community management. So if you're looking to become a community manager, I do highly recommend you read this book, understand the soft skills required to be a community manager. It's vital to your day-to-day -day work. The first skill is gratitude. Be grateful for the community members that you have. I don't care if you have a community of five people and one of those people is your mum being super grateful for the people in your community who have actually joined and who have showed up is so important. This isn't a numbers game. So first up, be grateful for what you have in the community. The second skill is self-awareness. As a community manager, you need to know your strengths and weaknesses and play to this. If you aren't great at creating the event graphics in Canva, maybe that's not your forte and that's okay. You either own up to your crappy graphic skills. And I've seen some community managers make some really, really funny graphics for their community and they've owned it. They've been super authentic. And to be honest, the community has loved it. It's, it's almost become a meme in itself for the community. But if you're not comfortable with that approach, then that's fine too. You can find people in your community to help you make those graphics. Just being aware as to what your own strengths and weaknesses are is super important. And you can work to that. You can find the people in your community that can help you with whatever you're not great at and work out a way to acknowledge their contributions. Also, it's really important to be aware of your own feelings, your own motivations for building the community. This is going to be important because if you don't know why you're building your community in the first place and understanding your own motivations, then it's gonna be really tough to stick around when things get hard. Accountability. Accountability is the next skill. You are responsible for setting the vibe and for making your community the safe space that it needs to be for your members. Too often I hear people blame the platform or other members or some other reason why the community is just not as successful as they hope it would be. Did you have a load of members that were engaged and suddenly they're not engaged and they're not talking in the space? That's on you as a community manager to go talk to these members as humans and find out what's going on. Why do they join the community in the first place? Why do they leave? And how can you provide them enough value to get them back into the community and engage again? Stop blaming the platform or the tools or something that's completely external and start looking at how you as a community manager can fix things. So having that accountability is super important. 
The next skill is optimism. Providing positive energy in your community is huge and super underrated. I bring the optimism all the time to community spaces and it really does set the tone and lifts everybody up along with this optimism that I have. Believing that your community can accomplish great things together is really powerful and it's incredibly beneficial to your members because they'll start believing the same thing. People will really feed off your vibes, so bring the optimism to your community. Empathy is the next skill. Holy crap, this might be one of the most important traits of them all for a community manager. You have to understand that community is all about dealing with people. Right now, I'm dealing with global communities where some of the members are based in Ukraine, and this requires incredible empathy to understand what they're going through right now not only thinking about how it impacts them, but also others in your community and how they're equally concerned. We're human beings with emotions and people are gonna feel things and it's very, very powerful to have these feelings and emotions. So as a community manager, having empathy will determine the success of your community because they're gonna see that you care about them as human beings. They're gonna see that not only do you care about them, but they're also equally gonna care about the other members in their community. It's what we call a tight knit community and it really does exist. So having empathy is an incredibly important skill set for a community manager. Kindness. Ever had a troll enter the community? <laughs> Most experienced community managers have had to deal with toxic behavior. It's my belief that we start with kindness first. Remind these people of the community house rules Give people the benefit of the doubt first. And if they're clearly demonstrating toxic behavior straight up, then that's the time to lead with an iron fist. But I truly believe that being kind and empathetic and understanding that somebody just may not be in a good place or they may not realize that they've broken the rules first. So having kindness first before immediately assuming that that person is a bad person is an incredibly powerful way to manage your community. Also, this ties in with empathy, but remember that if somebody is bringing a super negative vibe to your community, then just imagine what that person's life is like right now and what they're going through to bring that negative energy to your community. There must be stuff going on in their life because happy people don't bring the toxic energy into your community. So be kind, it's really important and it's infectious as well. I find that it really helps to spread happy vibes and positivity within the community. Tenacity is the next skill. So tenacity may be thought of as having hustle and constantly being driven, but it's actually more about having a solid level of determination, but not at the expense of burnout. Community manager burnout is a real issue and most of us experience it at some point. Now, Gary V does distinguish the difference between burnout and tenacity. Burnout is physical or mental collapse caused by overwork or stress, whereas tenacity is determination. You must be tenacious in community management and truly enjoy the process of building a community. You start small, you have these small wins, you watch it grow over time, and you have that drive to keep addressing the challenges that communities face as they grow bigger. Because I promise you, no matter what stage you are at with your community, there's always challenges that come your way. The next skill is curiosity. So I'm always curious about what other communities are up to. Is there anything that they're doing that I should be applying to my own community? And even more importantly, should we be collaborating with this community? I'm a huge endorser of collaborating across different communities. It's usually such a big win if it's done really well and it's thoughtful. I'm also really curious about how we can keep improving community, not just with the communities I manage, but as a whole in the industry. We have Web3 communities paving the way, looking at things from a completely different lens. And I'm really enjoying the process of being curious and learning from others. It's also really important as a community manager to be curious about your members and their lives and what's going on and how you can help them. Generally speaking, I think curiosity is an important trait for a community manager. The next skill is patience. 
Well, I think any experienced community manager will tell you that building communities requires patience. This is a long-term relationship where the rewards just keep coming. If you're persistent, you have that tenacity to continue delivering value to the people in the community. Patience is a must. All right, conviction is the next skill. So along with patience, you have to believe that the community you are building matters not only to the people in the community, but also to your greater purpose or goals. Why are you building the community in the first place? Building a community isn't something that happens in a straight line. You could have really tough times where the community either looks dead or members are disgruntled about something. Maybe a whole bunch of people have left the building. They have no idea if they will return. You have to keep showing up and keep the show going because if you walk away, just when things get a bit tough and nobody takes your place as a community manager, well, chances are your community ain't gonna make it. You have to believe that your community means something bigger than the small challenges that are being faced your way. Humility. Community building is tough. And even the most experienced community managers, they're not gonna pretend that they're geniuses that they are just these like amazing community builders. They can flip a switch and suddenly they have a successful community the next day. I guarantee if you talk to any successful community manager, they're humble. Just look at people like Rosie Sherry. She's amazing and she is incredibly humble. Also remember as a community manager, you're there to serve the community. You're not playing some power play game where just because you're the admin to the group, and you're the one that might accept invitations or you have the ability to block people, that you can play this bouncer role at an exclusive club, getting on your high horse and feeling like you've got all this power over who can be part of your community. That's not how it works. You must have humility as a community manager. And most times you're taking a backseat to others in the room. Ambition. This value applies to all the community members really, but as Gary V says, ambition is a strong desire to do or achieve something, typically requiring determination and hard work. If your community wants to move the needle and achieve something great, then it's truly going to need ambition in its toolkit. And lastly, we have kind candor. This is the last trait and it's the one that Gary V mentions. It's actually his weakness and one that he strives to be better at. So that's why his book is called 12 and a half and the half is kind candor. I believe this is also the toughest trait. It's never fun to feel like you're the bad person in the room that has to give somebody some kind of negative feedback. But I truly think of kind candor as being nice to people, but also being straight with them. I do believe community managers need to be really good at this as there's plenty of scenarios where you're required to give feedback to your members. Perhaps you've had a member who's stepped out of line in the community and you need to arrange a one-on-one -on -one talk with them to discuss their actions, how although they're a valued member of the community, they've broken one of your community house rules that's incredibly important to your values. You have to have a candid discussion with this member. Is it something that can be resolved? Is it something that they're willing to adhere to the rules in future and it was just this one-time blip and they didn't even realize that they made this mistake? But it's something that could be incredibly detrimental to the long-term health of your community. So just having these tough conversations is a very real part of being a community manager and you may have to remove a member from your community if they're not the right fit and that's really tough but it's incredibly important. So I do think that this skill is one that community managers definitely need to work on if they find that this is a weakness. So Gary Vee obviously talked about all these traits as a huge requirement for business success. And in my opinion, the whole time I was reading this book, I really felt all these traits were required to build and manage a community. I actually have a book to give away here. So comment below, tell me which trait you believe is the most important for a community manager to have and which one you think you need to work harder at. I'll choose someone random and I'll send them a copy of the book. Now I just want to touch upon the geniusness of Gary Vee and his distribution strategy because 
He truly involved his community with getting this book out. Even before it went public with a sale, he had already sold a record number of books in the pre-sale. And I just think that is an incredible effort. And what truly got me very excited was the fact that the community, the people that actually bought the book and listened to his instructions had a positive return on investment off his books that they bought on day one of the sale. So what Gary Vee did is he announced the pre-launch of his book, 12 and a half in late August. The book was going live in November 16th. And what Gary had mentioned was there would be an epic surprise gift that would be airdropped on the day to all of those people who had pre-ordered 12 physical copies of the book and uploaded the receipts so you had to prove that you'd purchased the books. For those that don't really know what an airdrop is, that's totally fine. Just imagine it's the equivalent of somebody sending you like a gift card that you could put in your wallet and then you can use it at a later stage. So he'd airdropped a NFT for every 12 copies of the book that were purchased. So you had some of his community members who were super active in his community. They were listening to everything that Gary Vee said. He dropped this alpha saying, hey, buy 12 copies of my book. He actually gave a time frame too. So he said within the next 20, sorry, my phone went off. Life as a community manager. He actually said within the next 24 hours or so, then you can get airdrop this gift in November when the book actually goes on sale. So he had people in his community load up on like a hundred books or like in multiples of 12, of course, but hundreds of books. I mean, there was crazy stories going around in the community, but what was really cool was not just the fact that people had really engaged and had bought a ton of the books, but the community was talking about how they were going to sell the books or give the books away to charity. And some people were coming up with really, really creative ways of giving the book away because they'd only purchased so many copies of the book, obviously to get awarded this free gift. So you had people donating the book to local schools, to libraries, some were giving it to coworkers for free or just giving it to local businesses. Now, full disclosure, I did purchase some of these books myself. So I've also been giving them away to whether it's colleagues or local businesses, to be honest, and people like yourself as well. I'm happy to, to share the love. But I just thought it was really incredible that it was a way to engage the community, people that were airdropped the gift. That gift ended up monetarily being worth more than 12 books. So that's how the members of the community managed to achieve a return on investment on the 12 books that they purchased. All in all, Gary V was really getting his community to help spread the book and its message to the world. And Gary had said himself, this is the most important book that he's written. So I thought it was just incredibly genius how he had got his community members involved to effectively become distributors of his book. It's an important book. It's something that we should all read and be aware of and understand that soft skills are so important in business and in building communities. I found this whole story incredibly inspiring. I wanted to share that with you all. So just a reminder, I'm giving away a book here. So comment below, tell me which trait you believe is the most important as a community manager and which one you need to work harder at. I guess you're going to be asking me which one I need to work harder at. So I will share that with you guys now too. I definitely think tenacity for me is the toughest trait. And I think a lot of community managers would say the same. There is that difference between hustle and burnout. And a lot of community managers are giving so much of themselves and they truly want the best for their members in the community. They're so selfless. They're constantly serving others. And so I think that burnout is a real issue. It's something that I've experienced. I'm pretty sure if you speak to any community manager that has been experienced in the industry, they will tell you the same. There is definitely a stage where you almost overextend yourself and maybe you feel overworked. You know, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes with managing a community and you can feel the stress. I think it also ties in with the fact that if you have high empathy as well, if your community members aren't happy, then as a community manager, you feel that, you feel the stress. 
off Bearstreth. I'd love to hear your comments below. Tell me what you think. Are there any skills that should be added to this list as a community manager? And we're talking soft skills here, obviously. I'm not talking about being really good at Discord, for instance. That's a video for another day. Thanks so much for watching. It's been awesome as always. I love making these videos. If there's future videos that you want me to make, please also drop a comment below. I really appreciate you watching. It means a lot to me. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Bye.